Hello, this is the lecture video for Module 3, Climate Change, Human Dimensions of Psi 333E, Psychology of Disaster and Climate Change at the University of Maine at Augusta. Now this module should take you about three weeks to complete. This is three weeks worth of coursework and homework. Uh, the final deadline for all of the activities is uh, midnight, October 16th, Sunday, um, 2016. So the readings for this module are number one, Climate Change, the entire book. This is, again, the book for our academic theme of climate change this year. And um, yeah, we're going to read the whole thing. It's a graphic novel. I really do love this book. I hope you enjoy it a lot. Um, I also want you to read the uh, IPCC uh, 5, the 5th Summary Assessment Report, and this is uh, the Working Group 2, which covers impacts and assessments, and um, the, the summary for policymakers. It's a short report, 30 pages, and it kind of covers everything that you'll find in the full report for Working Group 2 within IPCC 5. We also have the uh, additional references for your perusal. This is a link to all of the IPCC 5 reports. Um, obviously, you're not going to read them all. Maybe you will if you don't have anything else to do uh, during these next three weeks, but probably you're not going to read them all. But I do want you to have access to and know where these are, what they are, um, how you can access the reports so that you can grab the summary, for example. Um, all of the reports will have an executive summary at the very least, so you can look at kind of like the, the short version of the content that you'll find within the full report. And then, of course, anything that sparks your interest, you can look at the full report as well as um, all of the information and where the, the information within the assessment summary report came from. So let's talk a bit about the IPCC first. The IPCC was first established in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization and the UN Environmental Program. The purpose is to review basically all of the science of climate change and synthesize it into a single source. This is our best knowledge so far. Hundreds of scientists globally work on each report, seeking out published research, uh, connecting it with other research that has agreeing or disagreeing results. Uh, they debate every single topic. A group of scientists then takes the lead to write up each section or chapter, and then those reports that they write up are released publicly for review and for comment by every one. Um, and then they take these comments and they make any relevant edits accordingly and then finally publish the report. It is a years long process to put these together and it goes through a lot of different phases of review. I did review and comment on several of the chapters with the fifth report, which is the current one, which was completed in 2014. When the sixth report is being worked on in a few years, when it's open for public comment, I highly encourage you to get involved in this process because it is made better by participation by more people, um, if more tedious process, uh, but the, the more people who work on it, the better reflection of our best knowledge so far. The IPCC reports are the standard. This is our best overall knowledge of climate change. And when I say our, I mean the human race. This is what we know. One of the limitations is actually the extent to which we use so much knowledge within these reports. For any given topic, the report is synthesizing pretty much all of the research from the projects that say there's going to be a very small impact to those that say there's a very large impact. And so it kind of averages it out and we get very moderate levels of projections. Uh, the reports therefore provide different scenarios. So for example, if humans reduce emissions and take these actions to solve climate change, we can expect to have this level, this um, range of outcomes. If humans do absolutely nothing, we can expect to have this range of outcomes. Um, but because, again, all of these things are averaged from so much research, uh, we have so far outpaced all of the worst case scenarios uh, since we've been doing this research. 
And because it's synthesizing so much, um, so much information, we wind up with relatively moderate projections that are in these reports, um, not just focusing on worst case scenarios. But again, this is still, it's, it's the best synthesis of what we know so far. We just have to be aware that it's averaging down the, the results or the um, projections from the worst case scenario. So I do want you to have a good overview of the science of climate change and um, our knowledge about climate change so far, and that's where this graphic novel comes in. Climate change um, is based on science of the fourth IPCC report, as well as interviews with some of France's leading scientists in related fields. This was originally published in French, and then it was translated into English. Uh, because of the format being a graphic novel, also because it's a very accessible language within this book, I find it to be actually a very good introduction to the science of climate change. I first saw this book in a bookstore in Bar Harbor. Uh, I was a little skeptical. I didn't buy it at that time. But a few weeks later, I saw a, a review of the book in a science uh, website, and so I went ahead and ordered a copy. What I like about this book is, number one, the science is sound. Um, I've been in this field for a while, so I'm very familiar with the science, and this is a good reflection of what we know. And second, because I'm a psychologist, I'm interested in how people experience and understand climate change. I'm interested in how we as individuals and as societies interact with climate change. And this book does actually do a very good job of kind of uh, covering the range. Although it's not looking specifically at psychology, we see his psychology as he's going through this process. First of learning about climate change and going through all of the research himself and realizing the, the dramatic scope of climate change and feeling this sense of panic that he has to make very dramatic changes within his life in order to stop climate change. But humans can't sustain that level of panic, and so we also see time wearing on and how he kind of eases into this idea that there's only so much that we can do, especially when there are so many others who are not doing anything. What are my actions actually going to change? And having to stop and look realistically about these large social issues. And so he also explores all of these sociopolitical concerns and these psychological concerns within societies and within our global population. Why are we not doing better um, with this thing that we know exists and that we have to solve? I will go ahead and warn you, what I don't like about this book is that it ends on kind of a downer. Basically this, ah, oh, there's nothing we can do to stop it because nobody's doing anything and I guess we're all doomed. Um, and I run across this sentiment a lot and personally I find it to be useless. Um, it, it is not useful to me at all. It's very true if you watch the news, if you read reports, if you golly look at politics, um, you will walk away with the impression that nobody is doing anything about climate change. But I've been working in this field for a number of years now and I personally know thousands of people who are working on climate change as their paid employment or just as part of their, their life and how they live and their activities um, in their free time. And so the reality that is presented in the media that nobody's doing anything and we're all going to die does not accurately reflect my reality, which is that there are, in fact, a lot of people who are working on this. Um, we're just not showing up in the news. Um, my reality is that humans are working on this. We've got a long way to go. That is very true, but, but we will survive this. So take the ending and whatever else with a grain of salt. So we also have the IPCC Executive Summary for Working Group 2. Um, this is a summary for policymakers. And there are three major sections to this summary. First is the observed impacts. These are things that have already occurred and or are occurring right now um, that we have observed. This is true. This is happening. This exists within our world currently. Uh, the second section is future risks as well as opportunities for adaptation. And then the third section is managing future risks and building resilience. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the vocabulary and the terminology and the issues that are brought up within this, this report will harken back to information that we learned in modules one and two regarding disaster management and preparedness. 
you'll see a lot of the same language, there are overlaps with a lot of the same societal issues, and the focus on adapting for um, to the changes that are occurring with climate change, you can think about preparedness for a single disaster, but this is kind of preparing to the for the long term uh, many changes that are occurring and will continue to occur with climate change. And then also with the section on building resilience, you can think about what we have talked about and what we've learned about with adaptive capacity of individuals and of societies within the, the disaster management chapters. Um, even in this summary, there is a lot of information, and I do not expect you to A, understand all of it, um, or B, memorize it. Uh, I want you to read through it and become familiar with it to, to learn things. I want you to make note of what information is useful and important to you that you want to be able to reference back to in the future. But remember, there these are written by experts from basically every field, all backgrounds that overlap with climate change, um, they are contributing to this report, um, but no one expert is going to be writing this whole report. I want you to be aware of what they're doing and what they're considering within their field. And I do want you to learn as much as you can about what they do. But ultimately, I want you to focus on issues that overlap with your particular field, your life, your career, etc., as well as psychology, obviously, for the purposes of this course. But keep in mind, even like me, for example, I've been working in this field for a, for a long time, and um, I, ha I know a lot of these things. If I am asked randomly on the street, I can explain some of this, but if I want to get into the details, the nuances of, of the, the science that has been done, the ongoing research that is happening, the numbers, the projections that are coming out of it, I'm going to go to this report and references. I'm not just going to have this information off the top of my head. That's why we have these summary reports, so that we can can reference back to them. Um, so keep in mind, you're going to be building your own expertise over time, but your own expertise is not going to cover everything. We have other experts for that, and you can work with them and reference their work as well. So the assignments for this module, number one, we have our reading reflection, as always, and I want you to answer all of the following questions. So describe at least five physical, so natural environmental systems that will be disrupted or altered extensively due to climate change. Inside appropriately, in the case of climate change, since this is a graphic novel that is referencing a lot of science as well as specific scientists that were interviewed for this, I want you to cite the author of Climate Change, but also uh, try to figure out where the, that spe specific piece of information comes from, who it comes from, um, and cite that as well. Um, and number two, I want you to talk to me about, for each of the physical systems that you described above, explain at least two ways that the human populations will be impacted by changes to that physical system. Um, so the second um, application exercise is the information and misinformation in the real world. You may have noticed there is a lot of information out in the world when it comes to climate change. Huh, who would have thought? Um, some of it is conflicting science where different st types of studies are showing different things, um, but the science of climate change has actually been accepted science for decades at this point. And we also have uh, scientists who are paid by, for example, oil industries to come out and say, oh no, nothing on earth this is happening and it's all fake. And then we have pundits who have no scientific background at all who are taking this information or making up information um, and putting that out there as though it's expert information as well. And so what I want you to do is to find a recent, and recent here, I mean this year, find something from 2016, a news report, it can be an article, it can be a video, that discusses in some depth, not just a couple of sentences, but I want at least two pages of a news article or four minutes of a video, but discusses some sort of scientific finding or projection regarding climate change. Describe what the report is saying. What is this new piece of uh, science that has come forward? Um, and then I want you to identify where the information from this report came from. And 
I want you to look up that information and tell me where, who is this person or these people, um, what is their expertise, how did they come to this, identify to the best of your ability. Um, so you use your own judgment on this to some degree. Um, if this original source is a valid source of information, if it's a trustworthy source of information, and explain to me why you reach whichever conclusion you reach regarding this trustworthiness and validity. So that's it for this module. Uh, let me know if you have any specific questions, and I hope to hear from you soon.